Good afternoon, everyone. This is a recap of today's events. We visited Todd Trumbor's Bavarian bike barn with 150 different types of motorcycles. And we're now sitting in James Wonder's dad's office, which is nearby. It's a barn built as a huge man cave. So it has the essentials, which are space for tools, and cars and motorcycles and a bathroom. James is actually sitting in his dad's chair at his dad's desk. A whole lot of thinking went on in that chair and it's where I first met James's dad, Bill, some years ago. Thank you. Um, you know, my father was a great man and you know, I, I appreciate everything he taught me. And the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now is because I have, quite honestly, so um, let's take a step back, recap. Yeah, Todd Trumbars is just great, isn't it? I mean, it was yeah. really nice. It was really nice. He has, uh, every time I go over, there's more motorcycles. <laughs> so there's more motorcycles today than there was a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, and, and he said he has two more coming yeah, in. Yeah. And he has plans for building more motorcycle storage space. Yeah, he's very, very <laughs> passionate. He loves the, the, the sport. He loves motorcycles. And it's always great to be around him. So that was fun. He, that was fun today. He served, he served us a gourmet delight of hamburgers, baked beans, and hot dogs, which is right down my alley. And then we got a tour of uh, Bill Wonder's garage, which is where we are now. Uh, it was a, a lifetime of flying airplanes, running a shop, raising his two boys, and ra racing cars and, and buying and storing them. So it's, it's a, a wonderful heritage to have come from. You're very, very fortunate, James. Oh, I know that every day. Thank you. So we're off for Jim Hopkins tomorrow. And I'm really looking forward to Jim Hopkins. I, I've heard just so much about it. Never been there, but I've heard so much about it. Yeah, you, you'll be very impressed. He's not so much a motorcycle collector, although he has some great motorcycles. But his forte is, for instance, finding and collecting uh, the race award for a 1933 motorcycle race that was held in Germany. That is an example. It's not true, but that's the, the type of stuff that he has. He has Reg Pridmore's original race leathers and many more items just like that. It, it has taken over his home, which he has expanded greatly. So, so that's, gonna be a, that's gonna be really interesting, I think. I'm looking forward to that. If you're anywhere near Maryland, you need to go by Bob's BMW to see his fabulous collection and Jim Hopkins. They are that close. And uh, the day after tomorrow, we, we will be at Bob's. And Bob has quite a celebration that he's putting on for the vintage community just prior to the BMW MOA, which starts on Thursday, two days from now. Is it two days? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, all the days are going together. Right? Yes, what happened to those days? Yeah, but it's been a great tour so far. I mean, it really has. We've seen a lot of things. We've ridden a great amount of miles through beautiful areas. And, you know, and the people we've met and the things we've done have just been fabulous. We're very fortunate in the vintage community to have these people. Uh, also to share their passion, uh, particularly uh, this late in life for many of them. And we're very grateful to them. Is okay. that a wrap? That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thank you very much. Todd, thank you for yeah. opening up your BMW barn. What do you call it? The Bavarian Bike Barn. Yeah, Motor that's, yeah. that's it. And uh, how, uh, when, when did you start collecting motorcycles? 67. Okay. Uh, 67, I, I bought my first motorbike. My father was a huge influence on, on me. He, after the war, uh, he landed uh, from Holt Beach D-Day. Thank God he came home uh, in one piece. And uh, soon after, he went down the Navy Yard and picked up a Army Surplus w, uh, 42W uh, LA, <clears throat> a Harley, Flathead 45. He rode that for about 25 years. Unfortunately, he sold it just before I started riding. But anyway, he's a major influence on me in, in many ways. 
And um, so that, that was my inspiration. He sold it, but then I, I got the bug and uh, I saw an ad for a uh, Jalera uh, 120, 124. It was listed for $495. It was marked down 200, it was winter time, marked down $200. It was $295. It took me about three weeks to convince my parents. But uh, anyway, so I got the bike and that's what started. So I, I rode that bike for Number, a couple years and then moved up to a 350 RD 350 and then I met Carl Tuffner and uh, my whole world changed <laughs> my, 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 my horizons wide <laughs> and uh, I, he inter introduced me to the world of BMW sport touring and I never looked back I, I know the the uh, motorcycle that, that Carl Duffner had when you met him I think it was an R75 slash 5 uh, no, actually, it was it was this bike right here. The R90S. The 70, yeah, 74. Okay. 74 R90S. Carl, I, I don't know if you said Carl's deceased now, some 10, 12 years. 12 years, yeah. And um, his, his, his motorcycles were fantastic. Harleys, BSA, BMW, and they're all with friends. But the, the R68 was a, a, a precious, precious bike of his, and he... It's one he never let go. Uh, and with that, we should go into your barn and please lead the way. Okay. It's a barn I built. Uh, well, I, in mid '80s, I started building a house. I, it was a five-year project building a house, and then I and I took a couple years off, and then I started building this barn. And I figured, well, I got the land. Why, why cut myself short? So I, you know, I built. It as big as I thought I would need, 40 by 80, and then later on I put a second level on because I thought I had plenty of room, but obviously I didn't. So Todd, everybody's going to want to have this question answered. How many motorbikes do you have? I, I really didn't take, I haven't taken the time to count, but uh, I mean lately, but I'm, I'm, I'm nearing on the 150 mark right now. Okay. So if I can ask a question and answer it as well, the question being how many how many motorcycles do you need? And the answer is one more. Well, I got I got two more on the way. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> but that, but that, but the, but then that's that's my last one. Uh huh. I hear you. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of of the early RSs, uh, '79 in particular. Well, I love the motorsport, um, but the '79 RS Blue Silver as uh, it, it just uh, speaks to me. I just, I just love the bike. I, I, I love the RS, but I, I love the, I love the colors of that, of that '79 RS. I just, I think it's a beautiful, beautifully uh, done bike. So that, that is a special bike, and I do have several uh, copies of that. Um, but all the RSs, uh, the '77 uh, is, is, is a fine bike too. '84 last edition. Uh, I, I love that pearl white. But um, you know, I'd say this, I'd say that. Other than the Daytona R90S, uh, I say next in line would be the uh, 79 or 100 RS. But if I had to pick one, I'd still pick the R68. <clears throat> this is serial number uh, or VIN number 001. Uh, I had a fellow contact me recently. He had it for a number of years. He heard about my museum. And he thought uh, he wanted to go to a good home. So, and it's a, it's a fine runner. It came with city bikes, a touring uh, city bags, touring bags, and the a spare fuel tank because this was for the motor press. This was this is one of two that were brought in '85. Only two were brought in '85: 001 and 002. This is 01. It's a nice bike. I'm not a K guy, but. Uh, you know, I'm more of an airhead, but it is a nice bike. Now, th this here Battle uh, Battle Legends bike, I, this is also a recent acquisition. I've been looking for one of these for many, many years, and this one popped up in South Carolina. It was uh, raced by Kurt Liebman and Jody Nicholas in '94. It's also a great runner. Safety wire everywhere, <laughs> uh, as you would expect. Uh, now this bike here is, is an odd one here. This is another re recent acquisition. Um, this is an 84 R100. Now everybody's going to say, no, it's an S. It came from the factory just like this. So it's obviously an S. It's an 84 R100. It ordered with an S fairing. And it has 7,800 original miles on it. 
But this is exactly how it came from the factory, R100 with the S variant. Uh, it was news to me up until recently. <laughs> yeah, that's the 84 last edition. Todd, we've had a lot of people that are notable in the BMW motorcycle community sign this fender. We're going to ask you to do the same thing. Well, and I'm honored. It, it will be auctioned off after we get some more signatures down there. So if you can remember how to sign your name. Well, I'd be, I'd be honored to do so. All right. <laughs> Let me just sit, sit down here so I get a steadier hand. Good aim. Good aim, and I see you have some some great signatures here. So I'll try to. I can turn the wheel if you no, want. No, this, this 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 is fine here, I guess. Okay. Thank you very That's much, Ted. Again, thank you. All right, thank you. He does that every time. Well, Todd, thank you very much for giving us a, a preview of all your motorcycles because there, there's a lot more information I know here. You've got a great deal of history and, and it's certainly a passion, which is commendable to see. So, thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Glad you could be here. And if you had been here, you would also get lunch. Thanks, Todd. You're welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. We are now at the garage of Bill Wonder, who is now deceased, but is James Wonder's dad. Now, James had the idea to, to do this rolling rally and set up everything. We all in the vintage community are benefiting from that. James and I were at Las Vegas attending the Mika Mach auction in January, and lo and behold, there was a motorcycle that was gonna come across the block called the Famous James. It's a beautiful motorcycle, and of course, James had to buy it. It's uh, also very unusual. It's got a hand shift, things like that. What year is it, James? That's a 1948. Okay, so it's, it's one of very few, undoubtedly. But James now is going to give us a tour and highlights of both his motorcycles and some of the motorcycles that his dad and he raced and the story behind James's motorcycles, which are behind us here. You all just saw Todd's uh, location in R68. This is my R68. Um, I did the full restoration on this and um, it's a hoot to, drive, or to, to ride. This is a great motorcycle. I love everything about it, to be very honest with you. Great motorcycle, the R68. This is a fairly rare and special R27 Border Patrol motorcycle. And I actually found this in a um, consignment shop in Soho, New York, downtown New York. And after uh, about a month and a half of trying to make a deal with the shop owner, I did uh, finally purchase this motorcycle, got it home, and it was interesting because um, after doing some research on it and finding some things out, it's really quite original. The actual sticker from 1975, I would guess. So this was in service for quite some time. And so this is an interesting one. It's great, to, it's nice to ride. I get a lot of people who really enjoy it whenever I ride it. This is another R27 that I fully restored myself. Um, you know, except for paint. I don't, don't do paint or striping, obviously. Um, and yeah, so I, I did this restoration. It was, it was actually, this was actually my first full BMW restoration that I did. And this scored a 99.5 or 0.6 or whatever it was at Oli, AMCA. So I was pretty proud of that. And that was the first one that I did. So I ride that on a fairly regular basis. Then we have a 1967 R, R69S, which is great to ride as well. I ride everything, but it's great to ride the R69S. This is the famous James ML Miller Terry Lightweight. Um, and 
They used to use these in, for World War II. It was designed specifically for that. So you ask, where did I start off? Well, this is a 1936 Ford, all original, three original tires. Uh, this, is, this was my mother's, then my father's, and now is my son's, um, who's behind the camera. And we are um, gonna pull the motor out of this, and we, we will be fixing this up. We are not doing a restoration. We're just basically getting it running again, and we're gonna leave it in this condition because it's actually in really good shape. So where I started was in racing. I started racing a long time ago. Uh, my father started racing in 1951. My son started racing when he was five years old. So it's a racing family. And that's how I started. That's where I got, where I cut my teeth, if you will. But, but James, you also started doing a lot of mechanical work. So yes. For instance, the first engine that you completely rebuilt was a very complicated one. Yes, it was. It was, it was a quad, it was a Porsche four cam motor. And very, very few people in the world and, that's are right. qualified to put that engine together. And yep. you, you did it age, again, age eight? Eight. Eight years old, I built my first motor, and it was a, a Porsche 4 cam, because that's what we had sitting there. It was actually for the car that is affectionately known as the Pooper, which was a Cooper Monaco with a Porsche motor in it. So, yeah, I built that motor, and under supervision from my father, okay, but I built that motor, and it ran great. So yes, yeah, so that's where I started. And my son had the same upbringing, quite honestly. My racing career ended with these cars, just because you get to a certain spot. So these are Formula 3000 cars, um, and they are very, very fast. Just Google F3000, you'll see some hill climbs of them. They are super, super, super fast. Um, V8 powered, they weigh nothing, all carbon fiber, very, very fast. So this is where, uh, these are both my cars. This is where I ended my racing career when Brandon started to race. And I pretty much gave up my career for Brandon. Um, and he had a wonderful career as well. Uh, Spice GTP car that my father purchased, 1990. That's really fast. Small block Chevy, 850 horsepower or somewhere around there. Um, and that's a really fast car. And then this, this is one of the cars that are still here in the shop. This is the very last, and I knew we were gonna do this, I put the nose on, but this is the very last Shadow Formula One car ever made. So we are gonna keep a couple street cars. I'm keeping the 458, and you probably saw the 550, I'm keeping these, and those will be driven, you know. So which one, loved. which one, your wife's name is Anna. Yep. And she liked a particular Ferrari, and your father heard about that and said, buy it. And Let's so, go and buy it. Yep. So which car is Anna's Ferrari? This is Anna's Ferrari right here. And that's the one she saw it at a car show. She loved it. But she took one look at this car and said, that's gorgeous. And that's the nicest Ferrari I've ever seen. And so here it sits. So it's all in the family. Ha, all yes. this stuff is all in the family. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And finally, I'd like to show you just really quickly what we're bringing down to the MOA event. I didn't know I was going to do this video, but we were in the neighborhood, so I figured, you know, what the heck, might as well do a quickie. Um, these two motorcycles I have loaded up in here um, are going to the rally, so if you're going to the MOA, hopefully you are, um, you're going to be able to see these. Uh, the first one is an R51-2, 1950, that I, um, you know, did specifically for this. Um, for the rally and wanted to make sure it was done. So that's going down, that rides great, runs great. Really, really looking forward to having that down at the rally. And the other one is my R50S that I've written several um, issues, uh, several articles about. Um, and that's a, I mean, that R50S is my go-to motorcycle to ride. It really is. So don't be surprised if you see me out on that because that is a fun, fun, fun bike to ride. So that's it. Thank you, James, again, for the entire rolling rally, but it's wonderful that you can share your fabulous bikes. I don't think many people realize how competent and learned James is. He has restored several of these motorcycles from the ground up uh, he handles our website, 
all the technical details for the club, and it's uh, it's quite amazing. So thank you, James. And thank you, Mike. It's nice meeting you. <laughs>